everyone, we have a ex super exciting live stream for you today. We're going to be talking about Kubernetes with two awesome guests, but more about the security side of Kubernetes, not just the whole deployment side and getting your app, web app running and so forth. So let's do some introductions and then we're going to talk about what Kubescape is and why the open source project is awesome and why your project needs it as well. So with me, I have Ben and David. So Ben, you joined first, so you get to go first. So Ben, please give yourself an intro and let us know, you know what, what you do. Okay, so hi guys, I'm, first of all, thank you for having me here. Okay, it's awesome. Uh, um, so I'm Ben, I'm uh, uh, Head of Engineering at Armo. Uh, if, uh, Armo is a, a cloud native security startup in, based in uh, Tel Aviv. Um, and also I'm, Maybe I don't know what I'm more proud of, but also maintainer uh, of Cubescape. Uh, and David is here with me, who's another maintainer. David? Hi. Hello, everyone. Do you hear me? All is good. All is good. OK, so hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for having me here. Uh, I'm David. I am uh, the lead uh, developer and lead maintainer of Cubescape. Uh, I see over there my picture, which is great. Um, so yeah, it's a pleasure and uh, it's an honor to be here and to talk about uh, Cubescape and uh, about what we do, about the community and uh, all what's around us. Awesome. So this is everyone watching. This is a great way. You don't need to be a Kubernetes expert. You can actually uh, run this tool and actually it's a great way to contribute to DevOps projects, or even web dev projects that you'll see on the Eddy Hub. We're going to use um, the uh, link free project as an example today. Um, and I'm super excited to show you that it's a great way to get involved in the project, involved in the community, and you don't have to be an expert. It's going to be super exciting. And we're here to answer any questions you have. But I'm going to leave on the screen at the moment the open source Cubescape project. So we have um, lots of uh, exciting things to, to cover today. So let's start off right at the beginning. Um, and I have a, two questions, one for the audience and one for my amazing guests. So question for the audience, who has used uh, Kubernetes before in any shape or form? And the second question for the audience is who wants some open source green squares as well? So you let me know, we'll, we'll give some of those away today as always. Um, and my question for my guests for Ben and David are, so what is Kubescape? What is Kubescape? And um, why is it important for people to use it? So um, it's a very interesting project, okay? Because we, I can tell you that both David and myself, okay, and Armo, uh, came from you know to security and Kubernetes security for a different direction. And this was you know in the past years, okay, we see more and more adoption, okay, of Kubernetes, okay, in the in in the industry. And you know we also loved Kubernetes. We we're I can still tell you that we're really early users of, uh, of Kubernetes. And, you know, we're talking to many guys around the solution space and ask them, okay, what are your security needs? What do you need? And, and you know, they didn't want it to, you know, they didn't want it, the things we were doing back then and uh, uh, and said, what do you want? And they asked them, okay, this is my first time I'm using uh, Kubernetes, okay? And tell me if I'm secure, okay? Don't try to say, don't try to sell me, okay, something which is, you know, advanced security and like, you know, a, a PhD in security. I want, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, all the first years of the of the elementary school in security. Tell me what is my sec how I, do I look in, in Kubernetes? And Kubescape is actually came to answer this question, okay? So we are collecting Kubescape is collecting information from the Kubernetes cluster itself and and, and from different uh, information sources around, and and from these information sources aggregating the data to bring you security information about your Kubernetes uh, uh, posture security posture, and thank you if you have security issues around your cluster, what can you should improve? Now uh, another thing which is. I think it's really important to understand Kubescape is that that we are not really only looking at you know live Kubernetes clusters, uh, but as you will see you know in the next hour that 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 you know we are looking also at the developer, okay? Because we really believe okay that security starts really early, okay? Uh, should start okay in the development phase of every application. And when you are creating your Kubernetes configuration files, your application manifests, uh, you already start, uh, should start to look for security issues and Kubescape is there for you to do that. David, did I miss something? 
to the point. <laughs> No, it was it was really, really good. And I think it's so important because we have a variety of people in the audience. We have people who are using Kubernetes, people who are new to it. So let's give some just want to give some shout outs. Um, so Chai, Anish, Florian, Anik, Tamal, Julia, Avi, people from all around the world, Japan, America, India, loving all this. Let us know in the chat where you're all call, uh, calling in from. You know what I mean, like watching from. Carl has also done a lot of work um, on our projects. Uh, Avi, Hamant, Bebek, awesome to all have you all here. I'm super, super excited. Um, but you've all seen us do a bit of Kubernetes on the Eddie Hub projects. And I thought it was pretty secure because we're kind of doing the bare minimum, just enough to get the project deployed. So not trying to do anything clever or anything fancy. So I assumed our config, not our cluster, because my understanding, if my understanding is correct, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Ben and David, is that you can test the config with Kubescape, but you can also test the, the cluster itself. And at the moment, I'm just testing the, the config. And so I thought being the config being the bare minimum, like the minimal, it'll be pretty secure. But as if I bring up my terminal, as I just ran before um, the live stream started, but we will go through this in more details and show you how you can all run this. But we have a couple of highs there. So they're going to be some green squares for you all to get, you know, raising issues. And if you want some pull requests and so forth, and there's VS Code plugin as well for this. But we're going to go into more details. But my point is you don't have to be a Kubernetes expert to get involved in Kubernetes or in the whole DevOps space. And it's a great way to get involved in a project and get some green squares. So, you know, you covered it really, really well, both of you. So thank you. Thank you so much. And I think it's really important, right? Security is super important. I saw from your, your documentation, there are different types of scanning that can be done. Is that correct? We scan also Helm charts, um, by the way, uh, we also, I, I posted today to feature requests for also uh, customized and also Terraform. So if anyone wants to uh, contribute such a, a support for those type, for, for those um, uh, formats, go ahead. Uh, we, we obviously, um, uh, we, we will help you over there getting into code and understanding what's going on. Um, and yeah, so we also scan Helm charts, we scan the YAML files, we scan the cluster. Um, and the more, the better. That's awesome. And just to clarify for anyone watching, my understanding of Helm charts is a bit like if you're from the JavaScript world, a bit kind of like um, the kind of NPM package world of things, like things that kind of you know pre-package. Is that a good way to explain it, Ben and David? <laughs> or maybe I explained it really badly. Okay. It's very different, I would say. Uh, okay. Ben, I'm afraid you're on mute. Ben. Yeah. So sorry. Uh, so yeah, Eddie. The reason, okay, why I was thinking, not because <laughs> there was something wrong with your comparison, but I'm, the, my lacking of knowledge of JavaScript and PMs sure. is, a, it, 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 it's not there. I, uh, so yeah, actually, Helm is kind of a package manager. Okay. Uh, yeah. The interesting part is, is in Helm is is I think to in comparison to other package managers is the actual uh, uh, ability to. Um, to parameterize your packages, okay, and when you are deploying your packages, you can con during the deployment you are configuring them. So, um, for, for example, you are you know you are installing uh, um, a web application, okay, or, or uh, which needs a database backend, and uh, and for example, usually uh, for example in your Helm charts you can define. Uh, where to find this database backend and how to connect it and whether it has user and password and stuff like that. So it's 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 a package manager which comes with the configuration flavor. Okay, no, that makes sense. And I, I see um, uh, Comworkio is also giving uh, their perspective, which is really awesome. So they're saying Helm, cha Helm chart is more like temp templating of deployments um, with some examples as well. So yeah. it's good to see different, different uh, perspectives. Um, so yeah, I really, really like that. And I like it how you can scan also with different config. Is that correct? You've got NSA here. Um, and I can't pronounce that. Mi mi yeah. Mitril? Mitra, Mitra. Yeah, Mitra, we, we also yeah. Um, we support uh, the compliance with uh, some different uh, frameworks as the NSA, uh, Mitra. We also created our um, own frameworks um, that we believe uh, people should, uh, should uh, stand by and okay. uh, go accordingly yeah but uh, it's very important to have the, the right compliance uh after all when you when you need to report uh you know to the c the, the 
the the CISO of the company, and uh, if you if you already com- if you have the compliance and it comes out of the box, so so that's we're true. here to help with that. It's no, that like sounds. A, like, yeah, sorry. No, 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 carry on, please. So it's like you know you can do, from our perspective you can view the world in with you know two you know two way. Okay, one is that. You want to look for security problems, okay? In general, you are very concerned. You're a concerned citizen, okay? And you're, you're looking after your thing you are doing in, in Kubernetes. And in a more, I would say, corporate environment, you also need to, you know, to look as part of, of compliance, okay? Um, and uh, compliance frameworks. And this is what you know, NSA, MITRE, uh, and also we're going to in a month or a month and a half will come up with CIS compliance a framework also uh, we're trying to cover here in the project okay sounds good um, let's let's get started so what should we demo first I have got a few things prepared I also hear uh, David's going to be screen sharing um, we've got a platform you can log into as well to get your results and when you're running on CI and collect it over time so um, but I'm going to let uh, David and Ben lead and so I'm really interested to see you know how should we take people on this journey I would like to end up on the github action so that therefore it's uh, it's running um, with uh, on, on, on every um, and every change. Um, okay, so so um, if you wish, I can uh, I can lead over here with us. So should I share the screen or? Yeah, please yeah. go ahead. I think it would probably flow a bit a bit better, um, and then we'll we'll shout out some green squares. So get started, everyone. Who needs the green square? Someone said they did. If you can raise an issue on the Eddie Hub Link Free project, I will share it under um, the repo link I just shared for Cubescape. But here's a uh, link free. If someone could raise an issue and uh, it could be as straightforward as um, running Cubescape, Cubescape, I keep saying with a T, it's a P, Cubescape on um, the uh, link free project. And that can, that can be start off with that and we'll, we'll do some more shortly. Uh, okay, David, let me know when I can bring your screen up on, uh, on screen. In a moment. We'll do that, sure. So someone can raise an issue, you get a green square, and I can also add some of um, the results from here to, as well. And then we're gonna you know, show you how you can do that on a VS Code plugin, also on a GitHub Actions. So there'll be more green squares and pull requests uh, for all of you coming up uh, shortly. Green squares. Uh, yeah, <laughs> okay, okay so... Um, Let's do it, I'll bring up your screen, here you go. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, okay, so, uh, I took the, the link free project and uh, I simply I cloned it. Yeah, I took uh, it. I took uh, uh, the project he opened uh, and I cloned the project into uh, into Q, into my local directory just for just for this demonstration. Um, so in this project, uh, there are many different files over here. Uh, I did notice you have over here the Kubernetes uh, directory with some uh, Kuber- with a few Kubernetes manifests. Um, so I'll just go ahead and scan hide over here so it won't bother us. Um, and I would scan the local directory, and you would see this would take uh, literally a few seconds for the scan to complete. Um, as you can tell over here, we have a sort of a summary table of the latest scan. We have the different uh, controls that uh, tested and failed. We test many more controls, and we will talk. And I will show you in a moment um, uh, how to how we can see all the rest of the controls. Um, so these are the controls that failed, and we show uh, exactly the, the resources and how many resources, etc. And we also have this uh, t- uh, this the risk score, which gives you sort of a, a basic understanding of what your cluster, how your cluster looks like. Um, as you can tell, everything here is 100, but since that these controls failed, but we tested many more controls and all of that balanced it together to uh, this uh, number as a risk score. As you can tell, uh, we also added here the different frameworks, the compliance with the different frameworks with the nice. um, NSA and with the MITRE framework. So, um, uh, so, so you can see that. And we can also, we, we, uh, you can also submit uh, these results to uh, cloud to the, to a SaaS, um, where over there you can see uh, the ch- the trending. That means a score over time, uh, scanning over time. Uh, we're working right now and also showing the the history and the difference um, between the different scannings. 
um, regarding the repository scan. Um, but also there, we will get there in a moment. Uh, what I would actually want to show you over here is how can we fix this? Means we see some, we see all these issues, and we want to fix them. Um, so I would scan with the minus v flag or the um, verbose flag. So whichever you prefer. Uh, sorry. And While you're doing that, I'm just going to jump in and say Cubescape is the organization and the project, and it's backed by um, Armo, the the companies. Have I explained that correctly? Is that how the dynamics work? So yeah, I, 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 yeah. yes, and and actually, okay, I'm Eddie. We're just going ahead of time, okay, because it's going to be a more official public release. But okay. but uh, Cubescape is going to has already been moved from uh, from the uh, from the Armo organization in GitHub to its own organization, and we are moving it to be governed by a community uh, uh, governance. Okay, nice. and we'll, uh, uh, Armo is contributing it to. To, to you know to all of us so we are also welcome to to you know to come and contribute and be part of the users or either the you know the developers yeah that's awesome so uh, Carl thank you so much for asking that question that sounds super exciting as well uh, I actually see here some people in the audience um, I see Kunal Verma who is um, we, we're working right now on uh, on the EKS um, a contribution which is great oh, wow. Cool. Yeah, and um, I recognize there are another few faces who I saw in the GitHub also uh, talking with me in the GitHub issues, etc. Nice. Which is great. Yeah. Um, so thank you very much, guys. We uh, we really appreciate it. Folks, um, folks, less of less of the guys. Oh, uh, uh, yes, gender neutral oh. terms are best. Right. We're, we're both. We both. Uh, right. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, folks. <laughs> Perfect. Um, right. Um, so, so what we see right now is a sort of a drill down. You can see this is the file name, um, and this is the resource within the file because it, we can obviously have some uh, other resources in a single file. So this is the resource that failed. Uh, we have over here the number of controls that we tested and how many failed. And over here, there's each control, the severity of that control, uh, also a link to the documentation and the pinpoint of how to fix such a control. Now, nice. I did a little bit of homework before, but I promise you this is something that I think it took me less than three minutes to do it, and that would show you exactly what I did. Um, I went I went to the file. I navigated to this file. And then, um, as you can tell, there's the spec, template, spec container, the first container, the resources, the limits, the CPU, and it's missing over here a CPU. So what I did is just for the fun of it, I added the CPU, the me the, yes. the CPU, the memory, etc. And you would see in a moment how it looks like. So first of all, let's open that file. Perfect. Um, so, so everyone watching, this is a pay attention because not only is, does this add value to a project, it's a great way to contribute to a project. And trust me, the maintainers will love you for it. Um, and it is a way they've got documentation on how to do it. You don't need to be a Kubernetes expert, which is why it's just kind of um, really great for people to get started with a community, with a project or with Kubernetes and any questions you can ask. Um, so we will share some more links later on how to reach out to the uh, to the Kubescape team. Sorry, carry on. Uh, David. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. Um, so I will show you. So I can actually even ta uh, create a GIF or something that shows how we did it, like re literally in uh, less than uh, three minutes. Um, so I will just uh, return to here, and I will show you again. So for example, we have over here the the um, the the I'm sorry the security context, right? The run uh, no uh, as non root, and we have also the allowed. Uh, privilege escalation, etc. Um, so what I did is just copy paste these uh, these fields, and I, I copy those fields and I paste them right over here. So these are the uh, security context. I set the re I set the the read only, the root file, the allow privilege escalation, etc. Oh, it's moving a little bit too quick, and also the resources. Now for this example, um, I just had it. I I I only made these a uh, few changes. And if we run Cubescape again, okay, but notice over here, the score is 39.96. Let's scan again with Cubescape. And we're down to 17.03. Oh, wow. So with that so little this, bit of config, you have really improved exactly. the, uh, the project already. 
this is really, uh, and I'm serious, this is less than two minutes of work doing such a thing. Um, so there are many things, this puts me compliant, this really helps with compliance with uh, with uh, with NSA, with MITRE, et cetera. So it's also good for the C cells, as you say, and it's also good for your own confidence. That means someone who, um, I, I, I believe that I'm, me personal, I'm a software engineer as uh, my training and also as my day-to-day, -day, uh, uh, What that's what I do. Um, and but still as as uh, as you know as the the time like as time passes you understand that the security you want to start putting it from the beginning otherwise if you start developing things without um any thinking of security or anything like that um you would find yourself in a certain point just uh rewriting your code or going back to things you did a year ago or two years ago uh just to fix and add compliance etc so if and, and this is a recommendation. This is my recommendation to anyone who, any beginners, and I'm sure that uh, seniors would uh, would understand, would relate to it much more. Is you should think of a. It's like that when you write a function, you think about the runtime because that you know that in a high scale, uh, you would it, it's not going to work, and you would need to fix it and rewrite it. So also security, it's the same thing. So when you when you start a project, you first need to think of how how are you complying your compliance with security and this is a great way of uh, how to do it to everyone i hope you paid attention you know run the command use the v it gives you the answers it actually tells you what to do it tells you what the file's in you can go find the file it tells you what to add you can add it and the maintainers will love you for it and you can even show when you raise the issue and pull request what the score was from and to so in this case i think it was like 34 or 36 now to 17 which is you know you know such a massive improvement already so that's awesome and it's great to see the um cubescape team getting a getting a shout out um <laughs> literally the the cubescape team is awesome so amazing shout out uh, and there were various others as well i won't bring them all up now but thank you all so much and i hear the documentation is great as well so loving it and if you're again new to kubernetes and you're going through the documentation you might notice certain assumptions it always happens no matter how amazing the documentation is there are certain assumptions that have been made maybe with terminology or something like that you could always um, expand on it or do a glossary and various improvements so if something doesn't make sense to you then there's improvements to be made and you can chat with the team on how to how to to make those improvements okay perfect so do you want to commit that, David? Let's get that. Uh, let's get that. Um, you know, committed. I think we're gonna raise a pull request and uh, and do that. Or do you so, want to leave it for the community to do it? So about uh, so about pull request. Right now, it's actually one of the things that uh, we're working on right now. We have also a, a, a great guy named Avinash who we're working with together in uh, GitHub Actions, and we're right now doing um, the. The, you know the fine tuning of uh, the GitHub actions, and after that, we hopefully would have uh, something like really good that we're working. So we are working on it right now, and hopefully in the close, uh, I think week or two even, we would have a, a much better uh, visual, uh, visible and also useful GitHub actions than what than what we have right now. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that, and um, I hope you all are also looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, it sounds great. But I think we could do it in two stages. We could get, you know, we've got the CLI um, running. Um, we could easily, I mean, it's two steps to install it. So it could be a, a curl and then run the, run the command. And then um, these results could at least run on, on the GitHub action and send it to your platform. And then right. uh, in a week or two, when the new version's out, we could actually use the, the official uh, GitHub action um, and it will be a lot easier and nicer. But I think we can, we can get started and there is something we can do um, to show people how, how it's done. Um, so I'm keen to do that. But I know Ben wants to elaborate a bit, uh, I think, on uh, some of the results. Yeah, so I just wanted to, you know, to little bit, you know, do, give an explanation, okay, to, to all of us okay, here about, okay, for example, these issues, okay, because, uh, Dave, can you return to the table, please, uh, um, before, uh, what we saw before? Was it yeah, this with, one? With the, we, yeah, so, okay, let's start with it. So, okay, um, for example, we had two high severity issues, okay, which are, you know, also security issues, but they're also simply, you know, I would say DevOps issues as well. So the actual uh, uh, deployment, okay, was not defined with limits, okay? 
and for example this can you know eat up your resources on your nodes okay and this can be a serious issue okay so therefore we are as a high severity issue we are saying to you okay define limits okay in your deployment okay uh, both cpu and memory um in the medium range okay there were issues which are uh for example hello privilege escalation which is um you can configure the security context, okay, of your containers to not to allow privilege escalations inside the container, okay? Um, which is in more, in, I can say, tell you that in 99% of the cases, this is simply a no brainer. Just, you know, says it's false. It's it false. Won't break. Yeah, yeah, it, it won't break exactly. your application. Uh, uh, non root uh, containers, okay. Um, and the, you know, see at the last line, okay, for example, in the same table for the medium issues is, is a little bit different, okay? Because non-root containers are, are uh, in general, it is good, it's a very good security practice not to enable containers to run in with root privileges. Now, containers are never, uh, if we're running properly containers, they're not really running as, as root, okay? Uh, 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 because they uh, nearly everything which you, what the root can do is clipped from them and they cannot do anything, but still their user ID is zero, which is a bad thing in case of the uh, of vulnerabilities discovered. Uh, therefore, it is uh, the smart thing is to do is to not to run uh, uh, containers as root users. But for this, you have to make sure that your container image supports this. Okay, so Probably this is. Yeah. Something so this is not just something you can, you know, you're t you can uh, 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 turn off and 99% and we will be okay. This can break your applications, okay? And, and still it is the be a good practice. Um, and, and you know, uh, things like liveness probe, okay, those who are who know a little bit more Kubernetes understand the importance of it. So I don't want to take up all the time because I can talk about these things. A of course, but I think you've covered, you know, the high and, yeah. and half the mediums yeah. and shown the difference between some are just config changes and some are, some are a bit more involved. So I think yeah. the important thing to take away is I think someone raised an issue. I think Kunal raised an issue that we should add Kubescape. But I think also we could add an issue for each item so everyone watching, you should probably install Kubescape. Like I said, it's two commands and don't take too many green squares. Make sure you share them with other people, but um, raise an issue for each item. Check it hasn't been raised already and, and give a bit of information. And then you or someone else can also then raise the pull request fixing that, especially for the first three because they are um, config changes uh, and the project would, would really appreciate that. And it'd be great to get it right on the link free project uh, and use that as an example before we move it across to any of the other projects. So don't look at any of the other Eddie Hub projects yet. Let's get it right um, with all your help and um, the Cubescape people's uh, team's help as well. And then we can we can use that as an example to move across. So mm -hmm. this is, uh, yeah, it's really, really interesting. It's looking good. And so what do you want to cover next? Should we look at the platform next and show people? Because running on the command line is great. I love the command line. Should we jump to the, the platform next and show them that I can submit the information? So from your um, uh, readme in the project, there is examples, but there's also you can also have a, have a submit. And so therefore, it can be submitted to, um, to, to my my account that I've logged in with GitHub, which all of you can do and it's completely free. Hopefully you're all following along. And if you are, say hi in the chat, make sure you're still awake and also give the video a thumbs up uh, as well. And start the GitHub project too, of course, show some love. Um, so I could run the same command and I think I've got one somewhere. I think it's, is it with the submit or is it with my token? So is, with you, together with your token, yeah. Okay. And, and oh. also, wait, wait a second. Oh, I hit it too soon. Let me escape it. Yeah. yeah, David, you're on mute. Sorry. Oh, I was talking. Uh, if you wish, I can also uh, share my screen I have over here. Um, sure. Um, if you prefer that. Over to yeah, you. Yeah, so, so I'm just going to also, as we, as, since we already spoke about the repository, um, so actually, let, maybe let's take it one step, uh, uh, like, one previous step so we can also uh, um, as uh, Eddie started uh, talking about here uh, adding Kubescape as the github actions 
Um, so I have over here a small example. Um, you would, uh, it would be published very soon in a few minutes. And uh, I, and the Keepscape uh, GitHub action. So if in a, in, a, in, a, in a few minutes, is this the the action? Do this you... is what we have right now. We're working okay, on improving you. it, but if anyone okay. wants to play with it, so uh, go ahead. It's already published. Um, okay. It's just these examples. Uh, I can publish them as well. Um, and once, uh, so uh, this way you can uh, scan with Keepscape uh, your cluster. And the idea is that with the GitHub Actions, we can set up a, a threshold uh, that based on that, you can uh, the, the, the pipeline, the CI would pass or fail. So if oh, you awesome. have uh, a higher th uh, threshold than what you allow your, your score, so then the, the, your pipeline would fail. I have over here a small example of such a case. Um, so I pushed into the link free. Uh, I pushed my changes. Uh, with a low threshold, and you can, we can see over here that the build failed, and it also tells us that we failed because that the, uh, the the risk score is above the permitted uh, the permitted threshold, and therefore this is for this reason that uh, we we failed this scan. Um, oh, awesome! Okay, so I have a question on that. What is a recommended sure. threshold? So I you know I might put ninety, someone might put ten. You know what what is there a recommended amount? So uh, I, I can tell you that, that um, this is a good question and, and usually, not usually, I got to the conclusion that, for example, our internal, uh, in, our, for our internal health charts, I'm using threshold zero, okay? Now you can think, yeah, I, I expected this response. Okay, then now I'm going to tell you where I'm cheating. So there are obviously, <laughs> okay, the, uh, there are issues, okay, which, um, which you can either cannot solve or you acknowledge that these are not really issues which are concerning you, okay? Uh, okay. They're in every, with every security tool, okay? There are things which you are saying that, well, we think that, for example, in, with an antivirus, uh, if you remember, we, it was saying that, well, I think that this might be a virus and you know that this is not a virus. So you could create an exception for that. And also the same with Cubescape. So with Cubescape, oh, yeah. uh, 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 what we are doing is we are, uh, saying that we are setting the, the threshold to zero, so we don't want to let anyone to enter a new issue into our in, in, with the PR into our repos. But on the other hand, we have a list of ex we have an exception file, okay, where we tell that okay for this control for a given resource, we are we acknowledge and accept the risk, okay, and therefore we let, we don't count it against the risk score. This is how we can create a risk score of zero. Um, in our case got you okay so um that's that's good so it's uh, it's about being being sensible i think as well right so you know some people might go it's like with code coverage i suppose some people want you know a hundred percent code coverage and that's kind of you know not really possible or sometimes you can kind of game it i suppose as well so it's good to be be sensible about the choices yeah exactly Exactly. So I, I actually see here two different comments that I want to um, I, I want to respond to. First of all, um, uh, Orgato, I see that uh, you're working on our GitHub Actions. Great, thank you. Um, maybe send me an email. Let's uh, let's talk about it. Let's see where are you at and uh, if we can work on it together. Um, and Kunal, so this is a really good question. What you're asking, Kunal is asking. Um, if he has a low vulnerability, uh, vulnerability with a low, with a low severity, is it something that he should be concerned about in his production environment? Um, ben, do you want to answer that question? So no, I, I think that you know even sometimes no, you know things with uh, low severity are, are are still issues. Okay, I would say that these are not immediate issues. Okay, these are things that you should. Think about it and really decide whether you, you are concerned about them. But uh, but again, okay, we see that you know things which are critical are high. These are things that you have to solve today, okay. Mm -hmm. And things which are medium, you should solve in an upcoming week or weeks, okay. And and, and low issues are the things which you know next month uh, or, or in general are not really good. So. Uh, uh, I'm saying that uh, that in general, when we are categorizing these things, okay, are we are, when we are giving something a low pro, uh, low uh, uh, severity, then it is something that you most likely can live with for a while in the production environment. Still think about how you can get rid of it. 
Thank you so much for sharing for the question, Kunal, and thank you so much for answering that. Anyone, if you have any questions, as always, ask the question in the chat. Prepend it with a Q if you can, because it will make us sure we don't miss it and it's a question. Um, so yeah, that's uh, we love questions. I'm gonna gonna steal the screen share back for one second and just say while while you uh, were answering the question and talking, I um, got the command from my from the the account from the platform and I ran it. It looked very similar to before, everyone but it's with the submit and I'm submitting it to my account. Um, and it's again, the same result. I didn't put a V on it this time, so it's a little bit less detail, less verbose. But what I wanted to, to show you is, literally my clock says, you know, 4.37 um, uh, UTC plus one. And you can see down here, 4.36, literally a minute ago, I sent the results to the platform. And then this is a, a great way to, if you're running on GitHub Action, you don't have to kind of go into each action. You can kind of, you know, see your results here um, and, uh, and and see what's uh, what's going on, which I think is, uh, yeah, a great way to, to use it. But I know um, David's probably going to show a lot more details of things you can do on the, oh, there's loads you can do. We had a call before the live stream a few weeks ago and there was loads. So we can't show it all of it to you, but hopefully we can show you some of the, the features that might be useful um, for you getting started uh, with it. So David, I want to, Pass the, the screen back to you, over to you. Uh, you're muted, by the way. Sorry. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Eddie. Uh, ben, please feel free, or, or Eddie, please feel free to add uh, a, a, if you have any comments to what I'm saying. Um, so as you can tell, we have right now support also in the GitHub and Azure and GitLab. By the way, if you want to support other, um, uh, other URL parsers, so let us know. and please uh, feel free to do that. Um, so that's about, uh, so that's about that. And now with, uh, so I also, I, this is the link free and uh, we have here, uh, really we have a, a lot of, um, a lot of functionality that we allow uh, using this, uh, this uh, cloud. Uh, first of all, we can uh, dive deeper into a specific uh, uh, workload that filled. And we can see exactly the what controls failed, which controls passed. Um, we can also look at the remediation of this of this workload. So if we want to fix it, uh, you can see based on the different controls. Let's say let's take for your um, for example. Actually, while that's so, while that's loading, what when yeah. you've got these C numbers, are they specific um, Cubescape uh, like rules or numbers that they mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so this. Oh, sorry. No, no, go on, go on. Yeah. Sorry. So this C, or it's like the, it, it's the, it's the, the, the for the documentation oh, we yeah. have uh, for each control we have a number. Um, since that we have also uh, different controls, the same control may have the different names, in uh, in different uh, frameworks. So it's okay. easier for us to work with uh, also with IDs. So this way we can also we have uh, one identifier. Um, so, th so those are the, the IDs over here. Um, I would that maybe take sense. actually, yeah, <laughs> that, uh, thank you. Um, maybe I would actually take the remediation of a different control, a different, uh, uh workload that, uh, failed for us. Maybe this one, let's see. Um, yeah. So what happens is that we fixed, uh, we had an issue with the uh, control, uh, zero four, which we fixed and this, these are older scans. So if I actually go to a uh, newer scan, so we, we would see the results over there. Um, we can also go directly to the, to the workload itself, uh, to the YAML, to the file itself. Uh, we link directly to there. And so, and we're adding right now, we're working on adding over here a history so you can also see the history nice. uh, the scans you can compare it to your previous scans um we also have we also scan uh we have registry scanning this is a request of many users are uh, requesting already for a long time so we added also this uh registry scanning um i didn't set up yet registry scanning in my cluster but uh it's pretty simple it's it's pretty straightforward uh, you can it's straightforward and we also have obviously the cluster scanning um, so with nice. the cluster scanning, you can see the over time, uh, you can go through the different controls. You can also see the list of the resources that we scanned, the resources, the field. Um, and also here, probably you can see the, see the, the remediation of them. 
I have a question. Um, sure. So with the with the CLI, people can clone a project and, and run it locally and so forth, and, and they can get results and raise issues. By the way, everyone, we've only got one issue raised by uh, uh, Kunal. We need some more issues raised. But my other question is, if you want to run it against the, the cluster, do people need to, to spin up their own cluster to do that? And then if they do, will the vanilla settings work or do they have to enable something to, to get more information or to allow it to work? So it's pretty much, it works out. That means if you have already a cluster running up and running and you mm -hmm. want to scan it, it works out of the box. Uh, it's okay. the same CLI tool that would scan your files. Okay. They would also scan your cluster. By the way, um, you don't need to clone your repository. You can also simply provide the URL. And, uh, that is Kips true. Scan that. that is a very nice right. feature. I saw that. <laughs> Thank right. you for reminding uh, us. Um, by the way, here another opportunity of uh, contributing. We support uh, mainly public uh, repositories if you want to, and also uh, a private repository in the case of GitHub. If you wanted to, if you want to contribute um, GitLab, Azure, or other repositories, please feel free to, so we can support also private repositories of those. Um, currently, if you want to, if you want to scan a private repository of GitLab, for example, so you first need to clone it and then you can scan it. Um, yeah, in any case, so, um, where was I? Um, <laughs> Uh, regarding the yeah, so sorry, I interrupted. Right, no, it's okay. It's uh, so you can so you can definitely you can scan a cluster with the same CLI tool. Uh, we also have an option of installing a Helm. There's also the Cubescape uh, Helm solution where you install uh, the uh, Cubescape as a microservice. Um, w once you also install Cubescape as a microservice, uh, we also install another pod, another deployment, which is uh, of, of vulnerability image vulnerability scanning, uh, which you can see we have uh, we, we, this this uh, enables you to scan uh, your cluster, um, which is great. Uh, all the image vulnerabilities, this is something that we currently do not support through our CLI tool, and we only support through the Helm chart, uh, Helm solution. Cool. Um, yeah. By the way, also, all of the components we install with the Helm, they are all open source. So if you guys nice. uh you can all take a look folks, over there as well folks, <laughs> folks i'm sorry <laughs> so no worry you need to spend more time in eddie hub the bot will catch you out and give you some tips and other solutions and it, it, it comes with practice after a while um <laughs> no worries. sorry yeah. ben you were going to say no, no i just wanted to you know explain really to, to look back you know at the, at the opening okay that that you know you, there is a limit of things you can discover and tell about security when you are looking at uh, a pre-deployment phase. Okay, it is really important. We see a lot. Of, we really believe in you know in in GitHub Actions and, and and checking all these things ahead of time. But okay, when we are when you are installing Cubescape as a as a microservice in your cluster, we can you know tell a, a lot of other things from the actual running environment okay which uh, which is makes you know the security issues way more interesting okay so one of the things david mentioned is is the vulnerability scanning okay so we are scanning images for for vulnerabilities and we are combining the knowledge okay of 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 uh, of uh, you know what we see in the kubernetes side with image vulnerabilities and telling you okay whether there is an, a, a bit higher issue here okay for example if we have the workload uh, which is running you know somewhere behind the scenes okay and no one talks with it okay just does some local thing uh, and it has a critical vulnerability it is an issue but it's not a high severity issue if the same workload is public facing through the load balancer getting you know uh, uh, get, getting north south traffic from the public internet then you have to start to worry. And these kind of things, okay, we are raising, okay, when you install this part of the cluster. Yes, and that's, you're, you're absolutely right. I think that's, uh, it's super interesting to, to uh, differentiate between the two. So thank you so much for, for clarifying that. Um, I think it is really, yeah, really important. Um, okay, so more people joining, they just saw the notification. It's okay, you can, the live stream will be available on my channel afterwards, you can catch up. But Abhishek, thank you so much for joining. 
So what would you like to cover next, uh, Ben and David, as the, both as the experts, or shall we um, try and add this to a GitHub action? I think David's already added this to a GitHub action, so... Um, Ben, do you have uh, anything you want to talk about? Uh, nothing specific. I mean, we can we can talk about okay. We can show more about the GitHub Actions, okay, and and the actual workflow, okay, with uh, with GitHub. Um, uh, and um, I know it's up to you guys where you would like to take it. Okay. So, um, oh, didn't mean to go to there. Yeah, we can do that. I think that could be quite interesting if you don't have anything specific. So is it in the marketplace? Can we find it in the in the marketplace? Sure, sure. Um, let me find it. There are two. Do you, I don't think either of them are official. Do you have an official one? There's the Avinash one. Which one? No, I'm not sure it's here. Oh. <laughs> I think you should send the link for that. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, there's a link in the chat. So we are, we are, you know, we, we had great guys already working on, you know, on GitHub Actions even when, before we thought about, you know, uh, working on this. And, and I have to say that it's awesome. Okay, that, let's, uh, oh, that did not work. Let me have a look at GitHub. Here we go. Okay, here's the project. Okay. And okay, they're showing us how to use it. So it's really straightforward. Um, I would, would want to give this away as a green square, but... Um, it's a example with arguments. Aha, so yeah, you can pass it with the threshold that you spoke of as well. All right. Um, we're working also on adding for, for now. So in this version, we do not support yet um, accounts. So it's not yet a link to your account, okay. but this is something that should be released uh, very soon. Actually, before okay. the call I opened, uh, I, I pushed a uh, change regarding that. <laughs> Got you, okay. That, uh, that sounds good. So we've got some questions in the chat. Um, uh, Abhishek, yeah, we've done some demos already, so I'm not, we, we, won't, uh, we won't go through the demo again uh, now, um, but we'll, we'll show some highlights because obviously people are, are joining later as well, not just you. We'll come back to that shortly. Um, so uh, Stephen asks, uh, and Stephen actually helped set up our Kubernetes cluster for the Eddy Hub uh, community right at the beginning, over a year and a half ago. So um, Stephen's familiar with our, with our setup, which changed a bit since then, but uh, <laughs> definitely familiar with it. Uh, does Kubernetes, uh, sorry, does Kubescape plan uh, to allow you to export GitHub flavored markdown, especially for those tables? Oh, great question. That could be a nice plugin for someone to write. So Kubescape does uh, export the information. That you, you can use uh, export as a HTML file. Um, we could also work with the markdown. I think it's, uh, it, it's a transformation from HTML to markdown is pretty simple. Um, but uh, sure, we're always uh, open for more, for more ideas. Yeah, it's a plugin. Yeah, it could be easily done. Yeah, it's it, could be, it can be, it can definitely uh, be easily done. Um, I see over here, we can also show um, the Arbuck visualizer, which um, we did not show. Um, okay. Is uh, yeah. Jonathan from your team a bit of, bit of uh, you know, a help there from the team? So it's great, Jonathan, to have you here. Yeah. Yeah. So shall um, I share your screen? Here we go. Over to, oh, wrong one. Yeah. Uh, no, this is my screen, right? This is your screen. Um, Perfect. Yes. Yeah. So by, so also related to the question you asked before, so you can simply with Kubescape, uh, as I showed, you can either scan the local file system, right? Or that if you just simply uh, press the Kubescape scan, so it would scan your cluster. Now, as part of scanning your cluster and uh, submitting the results also to the UI, you do need to add the, the submit uh, flag. Um, but as part of that, uh, we would also show, uh, we also submit the R box. Now, with the R box, there's a, I, I, I can select the cluster I want, and it shows us here the, the map of the different, of how your cluster looks. Now, with this, this is something that it's great because that many, that many people who, a lot of people who use Kubernetes don't really know what is a role, what is a service account, and what's a role binding, and how does all this thing, uh, how does it come together? Um, many people have these, uh, uh, roles and um, and also service accounts who are not in use, which that can be a, a serious attack surface because if you're not aware of something, obviously it can be uh, it can be uh, it, it it could be against your advantage. 
Um, and with this RBAC visualizer, there are many operations you can take. First of all, there are, there are these uh, queries that we believe people uh, would want to see. So like, uh, for example, for example uh, the, we can show the cluster admins if we have. Um, in this case, we have. Uh, we can also, we have these uh, who can perform um, checklists, which means like, let's say who can perform get on the resource on the secret, for example, right? So we can see who can perform uh, the action of get on secrets. And this gives you a picture of the actual picture of permissions of what's going on within your cluster. So and that's super important to visualize that because it is hard when you see like a list and it says something and, you know, the list can get long and wide and, and so on. So I think to see that visually, see what can access what is uh, super, super interesting. So Jonathan, thank you so much. We all like graphs and visualization as well. So um, big, big plus. Even if you don't understand it, right? You go, oh, that looks really good. Um, but then you know, hopefully we can understand it and uh, it's something that... Um, people can can yeah because it's it's really self-explaining i think it's a really self-explanatory so thank you so much right and we we can also show we also show it from the controls themselves that means when you are in the um and in, in the the resources that means this control the port forwarding privileges so i can see the graph the arba graph that's uh, re uh related to it if if it has a arba graph that's related to it let's just make sure i'm uh, selected on the right cluster <laughs> And I removed over here the the who can perform. Let's clear it. I might uh, I might need to clear it before. I'm sorry. Uh, my apologies. Um, but basically, it can show you the 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 relevant um, graph oh, access. Let's say, um, yeah. So, so basically, it can show you the the relevant graph according to that uh, to what uh, uh, exactly how it looks like. Okay, that sounds good. And I think, um, you know, it's uh, you struggling to find it there for a moment is really good because it shows that this is live and it's not recorded. Um, so thank you so yeah. much. I know you oh, were here. just oh, proving here. the point. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I just, I guess that control really didn't have the, didn't have the relevant uh, Arbuck uh, resources. Um, but here's an example, really, that we took, a, um, I selected a control, uh, control C31, and it shows you exactly why this control failed in a visual way, not just telling you, listen, you have uh, roles that can do so and so, but it actually shows you the full picture of it. Okay, I love that. Uh, thank you so much. People give that a try and share your screenshots on, on how it looks on your, you know, local cluster. If you're using, you know, a local cluster or on your on your hosting, just you know, have a play of it, see what results you get and um, be interesting to to see. Um, just for the people who are oh, gone, Ben, so you go ahead. Yeah, no, no, just want to tell you that, that actually, you know, it's, it, it, it's really, you know, one, once you start to play with this Arbach visualizer, it, you know, it's, it's really hard to stop it because you start to find <laughs> different things, uh, in, uh, uh, in, uh, clusters, cloud managed clusters. Okay. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, it's really fun to play with. I think it's a great way to, um, again, contribute to a project. If you build a, a cluster with their config and then you can say, well, you can raise an issue and say this, I don't, this might be too open. What do you think? And you can just start a discussion is a great way to get another perspective on it. And I think, you know, the maintainers and community will, will, will love that. Um, so I'm just gonna gonna steal back the screen share from uh, for a moment, and just for uh, people who've just joined and Abhishek and so on, um, you know, what is the, the they were asking what is the project about? So I just want to do a brief uh, recap. Um, the Cubescape project has just been moved into. Um, uh, this own organization, which is super interesting. They will have actions coming out, lots of exciting stuff, but, but what is it? Um, so it's to check the um, security of your Kubernetes config. So you can do that for any open source project, clone it locally, run it, or run it um, against the, the GitHub project with the URL. Um, they have a great animated GIF. I'm going to show you um, on mine on the link-free project in a moment. I know you're all familiar with that. And you can get started in a couple of steps. I think I installed it with Brew for the Mac, but I think I've also installed it on a, on a server with curl. And then you, you run um, the, the commands. And yes, you can configure it further and submit it to your account and all the rest. But to start off simply, um, we, you can uh, see from my screen, I've got Kubescape, Scan. Kubernetes is, is the folder that the files are in. Um, so if I bring up... Um, 
VS Code, or I'll show you that in a moment. But you can see ours is in the, for the link-free project, it's in the Kubernetes directory. Um, and then I'm just gonna run it. Um, and I've got no verbose flag on. It's gonna run, it's gonna run pretty quick. And you can see straight away, we've got a couple of highs, which are something we probably need to fix pretty, pretty soon. But what I also wanna show is I put a, a V on it. So for verbose, we can also get, um, you can also get more information, right? So let me scroll to the top. So I did clear the, the terminal, so I scrolled right to the top. And these are the two highs that you saw earlier, the CPU and the memory. And you, um, But now we've got a bit more information. So we've got the actual specific docs on that and how to fix it. And I think that's super, super interesting. Um, a lot of them are just quite simple, kind of, you know, Boolean. So you could fix that, raise an issue, discuss it with the project maintainers and the community. And then you or someone else could raise a pull request. We definitely want these three raised on the um, link free project. Uh, so do raise that and take a screenshot, right? Add information, add the, add the link and add the solution. So therefore it makes it easier for someone else to uh, raise the pull request. Um, and then as you also, Actually, for the people who did, who joined, who recently joined, didn't see that um, you get this percentage, and this is um, what would you call this percentage? The the risk score, risk score. Yeah, and risk it, score. and and lower is better. Is that correct? Yeah, lower. The, the less risk you have, okay, the, the better. Okay, so we're at almost forty percent risk, which sounds quite scary. But as David showed us, by fixing the top two, I think it was, um, or maybe top three but this jumped down to half, like it's about 17 and a half percent, which is great. You get green squares um, and you get to know the community, you get to know a bit about Kubernetes and the project and uh, the project gets better. So everyone loves you for it, right? Everyone loves bug fixes and shiny new features and so forth, but security doesn't get enough TLC. It doesn't get enough attention. So if you do that, um, people will definitely uh, love you for it. And I see Ben laughing, which makes me worried. Maybe I made a mistake or, or my hair doesn't quite look right or something. I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> um, so, and you do have the different scores below as well from the different um, rule set. Is that the correct word? Can I call it that? Frameworks. Uh, Frameworks. So, uh, okay. so uh, compliance frameworks, we call it. Okay, perfect. So compliance framework sounds super important and it is right. It needs the name that it deserves, right? Security is always often forgotten about and the Eddie Hub project is looking a bit, uh, three critical, like, you know, or four, can't even count. That's, uh, how, how but they are irrelevant. Notice that just when you ah, run with the yes. verbose mode, we show okay. all of the controls. So we scan Got um, you. versus the, yeah. <laughs> okay. Phew. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, so that's uh, good to know. Okay. Perfect. So we've got nothing critical, but we've got quite a few highs. So we do need those, uh, those fixed. Um, and then you can run this on a GitHub action, but also specify when the action should fail, like what percentage. So for now, for example, if I was to add this to a GitHub action, I would set this to be maybe, um, uh, you know, this percentage. And then therefore, if it got any worse, it would fail. So I would know it wouldn't get any worse than what it is now, which I think is really important. But hopefully over time, um, you awesome people uh, who are watching can get some green squares and can fix these. Uh, and then we can, each time it's fixed, we can then bump this up. Some more green squares, right? Someone else could then submit another pull request to say, actually, we're no longer at 39, we're at 30. Perfect. Let's. That's our. That's our threshold. Like our, our the worst case we want to want to go to, and we can keep getting better about it. A bit like you know code coverage for automated testing. You want to keep getting better at it. It's not the perfect metric, but it's a metric nonetheless. It's something that we can always gauge the project or make sure it's getting better rather than than worse. Um, and then when we do it on the GitHub action or on the command line, you can also submit it to the Kubescape platform and you saw the, um, the, the RBAC visualizer, but then I'm going to quickly show you the results that we've seen on the screen. Again, you can, um, get this submitted. So there we get to see the, and the history is coming out very soon as well. I understand from, uh, from David. So yeah, it's, um, I, I did like it, how you can get more information on the, on the actual, um, you know, the, the, the fix and what it means. And so it's a great way to learn about a project, um, too, as well. So hopefully that all makes sense. I hope I didn't miss out too much. Ben and David, let me know, but hopefully, um, Abby shake that helps. So there's lots of things you can, you can do. And actually one thing I briefly touched on before is Kubescape, Kubescape with a P, my, my mistake, has a VS Code uh, plugin as well, which I've installed. Um, 
and you know, I, love, I love animated GIFs, but it shows you, it underlines um, things that are going wrong and then what the problems are in the problems tab. So I can actually uh, show you that here it's underlined it already and you can hover it, you get a tip. Again, in your, in your workflow, which is uh, super awesome. And if I open the terminal, straight away problems, you can see that there is an issue. So again, great things that, that can be improved by you. Raise an issue, like just make people aware of it. Because I didn't, until I, inst until I installed this plugin, I didn't know this was a potential issue. And so, you know, if you have the plugin and you're running a project and you see an issue, just, just sorry, you see a problem, then, then raise the issue and have the discussion with the team. Um, ben, you, you were going to go ahead. You're going to say Yeah, no, I just want to say that, uh, that there are also, for example, this control is, is like something you can configure, okay, because you can decide what are the registers you are read, uh, ready to accept images from, okay, oh, yeah. and, and configure the controls and, you know, to keep, you know, uh, again, as a security uh, baseline, okay, for, for, for your environment, you can define, I'm, I'm ready to accept, for example, for from ghcr.io, I'm ready to accept images, and, and that's all. So it's like a security control for yourself not to accept container images from any places you are getting to. Just make sure that you are know what's happening inside your environment. I love that. That's, uh, yeah, super important, right? Little things, but someone might make a typo and might change this to, to an O, oh, sorry, a zero. We don't realize it, and then we're starting deploying um, the, the, the wrong app, right? So I think it's important to have these, these um, Im improvements. I, I love that. So again, more green squares for everybody to contribute because Link Free is growing. Uh, we're not as big as, as, as uh, Cubescape. I think Cubescape is like, you know, almost 7,000. With your help, we'll get it there today. But um, 7,000 stars. But the uh, Link Free project is, you know, approach is, is going over 1,000 stars. So um, more and more people are, are using this project. So we need to make sure it is, it is bulletproof and, and, uh, and so forth. So, yeah, great advice. Uh, by the way, everyone, we're at 37 thumbs up on the live stream. Don't forget to give the, give the video uh, a thumbs up. It really helps support my channel and uh, will cost you nothing. Um, and Emma, thank you for joining and supporting. Great to have you, great, great to have you here. Um, thanks for saying hi in the chat. So what else would you like to talk about, everyone in the chat? Let us know your questions. And um, we've got two experts here. Ben and David, anything else you think that people need to know about? Um, I would really, you know, just, you know, some other interesting things by letting people to ask their own questions. Okay. But just sure. to, uh, uh, to talk a little bit about the project itself. So, um, as I told you at the beginning of the stream, um, we are aiming to turn this to full community driven project. Nice. Um, and we are in the, um, we're in discussions with CNCF to go into sandboxing. Oh, wow, that's so cool. So uh, uh, hopefully, okay, uh, fingers crossed, okay, next TOC meeting should be somewhere before next KubeCon. So um, so we'll be accepted and we'll, then we'll be part of, 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 of the project, will be part of CNCF. Um, and also we, are, we have, uh, you know, um, interesting directions. Mostly we are looking for the next steps where this project is going is in to give you more interesting prioritization among your security issues. So, um, so sc scanning your YAML files like we did, you know, in the live stream is, is awesome. And you, you get, a, 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 you know, a, a, a number of issues, okay, you can address, but when you're scanning live clusters, okay, with, with, you know, with, big uh, deployments, then you will have the overwhelming number of issues. And totally. we are really aiming into, you know, to finding out what are the most important security issues. As I told before, what are the things we need to solve today? What are the things you need to solve, you know, uh, uh, tomorrow and next week? And we're really investing into, uh, in, in, into creating a, a prioritization engine, okay? Which which will enable uh, which will even help you to save time, okay, to address really the first the important issues, and uh, and I think you know stay tuned, okay, to the project, okay, and follow what's happening, okay, because I think in the next month or two there will be really interesting things. Uh, we are also uh, have um, uh, hopefully by KubeCon, okay, uh, which is in like two months. 
I think uh, we'll be releasing an interesting feature for vulnerability scanning in order to tell you what are in your Kubernetes cluster, which vulnerabilities of your images are relevant or which are not okay for sure. And in order to, so again, in order to focus you more on the on the real things and less into the you know the lesser uh, uh, things. So this is more uh, more or less the the you know the uh, the direction of the project. I, I love that, and you're right in that you know there's KubeCon that's not far away, there's Hacktoberfest that's not far away, and you're definitely right about scanning the Kubernetes cluster. How you're going to get a lot more um, results uh, than just doing the the config. Talking about CNCF, which is amazing, you know Kunal's giving you a massive uh, shout out. Um, with Hacktoberfest coming up. Any suggestions or recommendations on how people could contribute to uh, Cubescape? Like any, any, any tips? Because I know we've got lots of people here who would love to get involved in your awesome project and awesome team. Um, any, any suggestions, any diff maybe a different project in the organization or, you know, let us know. David, do you want to go with it? Sure. So we're actually a little bit overloaded with uh, people who are willing to contribute, which is great. We're not complaining. It just takes us a little bit more time to go through everything and uh, to read all the PRs, to read all the issues, uh, to comment. There are a lot of great ideas coming up. We did create this uh, op um, open for contribution label, um, which Perfect. which um, you can simply search uh, the issues with. Uh, I'm going to share that in the chat. Exactly. So everyone, go have a look at this. And don't forget, start the project while you're at it as well. There we so, go. Please, so please feel free to either assi either um, start working on these issues or um, just play with Cubescape. Uh, we're not perfect. And this project isn't even one year years old. And we are very, we're less than a handful of people who worked on it for most of that time. So there's a lot, there's much to be done over there to make it perfect for everyone and to, to make it much better than what it is now. So um, I just, uh, you know, I. Uh, just recommend anyone who wants to play with it and uh, propose some ideas or yeah, something like that. Please feel free. Yeah, and also not, not just don't you know we are not expecting everyone to be a Go developer, understanding deeply a Cube API and and you know start to write features. But we are every you know feedback you're giving of you're trying to use and something is not clear and you know feel free really to raise issue. We you can raise in the GitHub. We have, have our. Discord channel, okay, which is really cool, okay, with a lot of activities. So we are um, we are most of the time there as well. So just really, if, if you are using any feedback, we're is for our, for ourselves a really important in contribution. That sounds good. Yeah, everyone, don't forget, have a go. Any questions, do ask. They've got a Discord, which is which is awesome. Always great to chat to people in real time. And then make sure you log it as an issue. And they do also have discussions here, which is a great way to uh, to have discussions with people, not to lose that, because in Discord, some things are lost. But then again, sometimes you want that real-time uh, side of things. Um, so everyone, I have shared that in the, in the, in the chat. So do go check that out. Um, and they do have other projects as well in their organization. They've got customized GitHub org. I like that. Really nice. Um, they do have other projects as well. So there are other ones that you can look into as well. Right. Most of the projects, there are either really um, dependency packages for Cubescape or also the okay. different uh, microservices who are running within uh, the Cubescape solution, uh, the Cubescape Helm solution. Um, over there, we didn't yet set up enough of tickets like uh, that. I would say that it's uh, the, obviously it's public, and uh, you can feel free to look at it and uh, to comment, etc. Um, but we did not set up over there your tickets. But if you noticed anything um, that's missing in the Helm charts, etc., um, so let us know. You can open that ticket either in the Helm um, in the, in the Helm uh, repository or also in the Cubescape repository. Uh, really, get, GitHub is great with, uh, I, I really like GitHub uh, with the, also the discussions and also the issues, uh, uh, chatting, you, using the issues for chatting, I think it's really great. So you can also, uh, um, uh, it, the, the messages aren't lost and you can you can read and uh, so, so it's uh, really great. Like, uh, feel free to go ahead and, and communicate with us through GitHub. 
Exactly. GitHub's such a, a great way because the project's there and discussions can be had there as well. Pradooma, you are late. You know, um, uh, Pradooma's really into DevOps, so you are late. So we're going to give you some homework to do shortly so you can do after the live stream. Um, I, I actually f have a question about this GitHub action. I think, I think things might have maybe changed. Um, in the uh, um, documentation, it says to, to use this action, but should it point to itself? Should it point to... Um, it, it it will point there uh, eventually. Okay. Uh, okay again, yeah. we didn't yet publish the new. We're still working right now with Avinash. We we're just we want to make a few more fine tuning and uh, um, let's say add account ID support or those type of sure. things. Um, and then uh, then you will also sense. see it in the Cubescape. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. But it's looking really good. Perfect. Um, <laughs> Everyone being mean to Pradooma for being late. Pradooma, don't worry. He's always super supportive. No worries, Pradooma. I know you're busy um, <laughs> as well. Uh, so we'll, ha we'll have lots of work to do. We need to add a Cubescape to the uh, Link Free project. And I know um, everyone, especially Pradooma, will, will help me with that. Um, okay, so what else do you think we should cover? Is there anything you would like to cover? Um, I, I know after this live stream, I'm probably going to open a Discord call in the Hub community, and I might um, have a bit more of a place so if people want to come along, ask your questions, and uh, we can, um, you know, you can unmute yourself, people, and, and talk in Discord. Uh, but I know I've learned so much in today's live stream. I'm super excited about uh, making making the improvements uh, to the Eddie Hub projects. So luckily, nothing's happened, but we did have some highs there that we do need to uh, um, to improve. So anyone who's just joined, I will bring this up here. You can see we had a couple of highs here, so definitely need to improve some of those quite soon. I see that uh, we had here a question, okay, whether Cubescape can be incorporated in a CI pipeline as a pre-hook scale K. Th thank you so uh, much. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, so, I missed that. Thank you. Sorry, yeah, Peter. So the the answer is is yes. Okay, the CLI can definitely be uh, can be you know hooked into the pre hook. Uh, honestly, I haven't done it yet, but there, I don't see any reason why not. Okay, so we just look you know follow the the examples of of of, uh, of how to work with the Cubescape CLI, and you can you know I'm sure you can manage to pull it up. That's a really interesting question. So again, thank you, uh, Ben, for um, spotting that. And, and Peter, I did say I was going to bring that up and I, and I missed it. Well, I forgot to. Um, what I like about that question as well, you could also run it locally as well, potentially. I don't think it's, um, uh, it might be a bit too much, but for, for, for say, I don't know if it's a bit too much, but we've got um, like pre-commits. We run on Linter. We could run automated tests on there. Um, I suppose you could put a con this is, as this is um, you know shell script. We could put um, a condition like if anything changed in the Kubernetes folder, then um, then run that and, and check that it hasn't you know gone under a certain level. I'll probably still run it on a GitHub action um, personally rather than on a on a locally on on a prehook because um, then we have to get people to install it. But that could also be done as a, as part of the in, this is an, uh, a, a JavaScript package, a JavaScript project. So we could do it as, um, I don't think we have, yeah, we do have a prepare step. So we could also install um, it locally for people too as well. So it just, just works out of the box. So that is is something that, that could be done. I'd probably run it personally on a, on a GitHub action um, is what I would do because then it's, uh, the results are there, are there. So we do have, where is the uh, do you have, um, well, I'm link free. So we do have all our actions running at the moment. Um, we, I would have it run before um, the, the image was uh, created, for example, um, and then published to the uh, GitHub container registry and before it was deployed. So I'd have it right at the beginning and I would, I would then fail the, the rest of this. So I might have it here in the, uh, in the middle to do that. But it's always great to hear other people's ideas and to see what what they would run so maybe that's something um we could discuss afterwards um a bit more detail again i'd love to see kind of maybe some of your projects and how you would do that uh, i think it's uh yeah, super interesting. Hopefully I understood the, the, the question well. Uh, Pradum, I'm going to open some PRs on, for Cubescape. Sounds good. Awesome. They, they, they sound, they got plenty of time. Um, and so any activity would definitely keep them busy and out of, uh, out of trouble. So um, yeah, here, here goes my weekend. Yes, exactly. 
um so that's great it's probably a really good place to end let's do some uh, outros and anything else you either of you want to cover give people a few moments if they have any last minute questions um but i think it's it's uh, lots of information i think people should go and, and practice and have a have a play um so yeah everyone before we do outros give the video a thumbs up if you haven't already and also star the cubescape project i am going to share it in the chat again and while I'm doing that, Ben, David, um, any outros you'd like to like to give? I um, uh, well, I don't know. I don't have anything more to say. But I was really happy to be here. And uh, and guys, keep up with the good work here. It's a great place to learn. Awesome. And and by uh, guys, uh, Ben meant folks. Yes, I mean, I meant folks. <laughs> yeah. I meant folks. I, I would also add here, folks, that uh, it's been yes. a pleasure. <laughs> and Ten points something. to David. <laughs> I definitely learned something. And um, as Ben mentioned before, we're really going to the CNCF. That's uh, that's where we're aiming. We want to go there. We love, uh, we love the community. We love open source. It's, yes. uh, it's really great. And um, so, yeah, really, the more contributors we have, the more ideas we get. So it's, it's, it's just gets better. So thank you very much. This is so true, right? Collaboration first, code second. From the collaboration, we can get so many ideas. Um, I actually have a question for both of you. So you mentioned CNCF, and we really want you to get into CNCF. What can people do to, to help? Can they maybe take a screenshot of this, share it on socials? Can they tag you, tag CNCF? Can they contribute to the project? Like, do you, is there anything they can do to kind of help? So, I, yeah, go on. Oh, I was about to say, I don't think there's much you can do that won't help. So I guess Love any, if you, if you, if you tag in Twitter or in LinkedIn or anywhere else, CNCF, this show, Cubescape, it's not going to yeah. harm. That's for sure. Ben. So I, I think really, you know, what, what's happening is, is really what CNCF is a great organization. And I have to say that they are looking at, at, at really important things, uh, like, you know, really the user traction and and the community so you know if you can contribute that's help uh, that helps us if you can you know uh, uh if you're using cubescape and you love it okay and th then you're making a little bit you know shouting out a little bit to, to cncf okay about it that i'm using and it, it helps me okay then it, it really helps us also so just you know being around and talking about this is helping Perfect. See so everyone just getting involved in the conversation and being supportive like you are here now is definitely going to help them. And, you know, we're getting this, this awesome free project. It's open source. You can use it and also, you know, platform. So, uh, yeah, give them some love on, on starring it on uh, GitHub and also on, on socials as well. Um, so Ben and David and everyone listening, thank you so much for this amazing live stream. I'm super buzzed and charged to uh, improve the Eddie Hub project. I know everyone will help and support with that as well. Um, I'm going to bring up the holding page. If you can both hang on for a few more minutes and I can say thank you privately afterwards, but I want to give everyone a, a wave now and I look forward to geeking out with you all soon. Everyone have a great week. Thank you so much. Bye. I'm going to wait for a few more seconds. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> my